Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. This is your first time here. Welcome. Today's video is going to be a kind of a triple purpose video. Uh, for one, it is a Black Doctor from the Cork Collection. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, for two, I'm discussing several different kinds of uh, mixed wings, um, which is another part is a part of another video. So you will see uh, this fly in another video. Um, but this is also a review video for some new silk that I got. Um, this is a mulberry silk, a, a Chinese mulberry silk that I found on Etsy. It was $50 for 50 spools of multicolors. So I wanted to see if this could be a viable solution for beginners that are having a hard time, um, you know, acquiring Japanese silk, the, you know, the expensive JEC silk, or for those that just can't afford it. Um, this could be a really affordable way for you guys to be able to get your hands on something that can help you. Um, so I figured why not give it a shot. And um, I did tie one fly with it already, which some of you may have seen on Facebook. This uh, blue doctor here, and I'm not sure if you can see the silk on that, but um, I like it. It's got a decent color to it. It's it, it lays out smooth, and it burnishes well. But uh, I'm gonna use some black on this one with this black doctor, and we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. So um, yeah, so let's get into this. I've already put the gut on and just tied up to the back here. Um, I, this is fully gutted all the way up, all the way back, and you can see I've tapered it back. And now, coming forward a little bit, the uh, tag is just a fine silver tinsel. Apologies, I seem to have misplaced it. I just cleaned my desk today, so I'm sure the rest of you understand that uh, somehow things disappear when we clean. I lost a package of hooks earlier, the hook that's in the vise now. Uh, I lost that package for the well, better part of a couple of hours. It wound up in a drawer that I didn't expect it to be in. All right. This is a uh, Legarton really fine um, oval silver tinsel. I don't want to go all the way back to the hook valley. Just the way this hook is and the barb, I want to try to stay ahead of it a little bit. Um, plus on the cork collection flies I noticed, they have much smaller um, tips and tags. So this being sort of a cork collection fly, uh, I, I want to kind of adhere to that a little bit. Back you up just a bit. I'm only going to do three turns of tinsel.
And then lining that, lining it up so that way the butt will end right at the tip of the point, hook point and the body will start there. But I actually think I'm going to have the body start, I'll try to have the body start a little bit before that on this one. So now the tag is yellow floss, and this is the uh, this is ovale. But um, let's use this. One. I didn't dig out the yellow, but let's, let's do it. I happen to have a scrap piece of the ovale sitting here, but since I'm doing a floss review, let's just use it. This is the. Uh, with a golden yellow that they give you. There is no like color list or anything that comes with it. It's just spools of colors. But um, yeah, as it comes off the spool, it looks like it's two strands. It looks like it's a yeah. That looks like a two-strand floss, which is not bad to wrap together actually. Um, and when I did the well, I'll show you. Uh, how I do the bodies. So let's tie this in. And then we'll just wrap this. I also notice that this seems to be rather sturdy. When I tied the Blue Doctor last night it seems to be rather resilient. I caught the hook point a couple of times and I also did it without gloves and I noticed I'm not fraying anything or I kind of put a little bit of tension on it to try to see if I could pop it or start to splinter it. Um, not splinter, but you know what I mean if you've seen floss come apart before when all the little um, fibers start to break. And doing it without gloves allows me to be able to rotate it in my fingers a little bit more like that, which helps me flatten it out as I'm wrapping. And I like that about it. I just happened to look over and I noticed the uh, recipe actually calls for uh, yellow wool in this tag. So, um, I could leave the floss or I can go with the wool. Well, I guess I'll go with the wool, otherwise I can't really call this much of a cork fly. I don't follow the recipe. Of course the hook isn't really something that is used uh, either, but I'm trying to get rid of that fray that I had starting in my thread. Anyway, I like the silk. I like the yellow silk. Um, Alright, so this is uh, Bruin wool. Which I got from uh, Feathers MC. Comes in a bag like this with all the different colors. I think it was like 15 bucks. Which is really not a bad deal at all for what you get. That'll last you quite some time. So now, I've clipped off a little piece of it, and what we'll do is just separate it out and take, just you only need one, one of these strands. And you're going to take the strand, and 
then you need to pull it apart. I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of wax on the thread. And then you'll start pulling this apart, just like this. Basically turning it into dubbing. Once you've got it all pulled apart like, like this, then very, very thinly, in very small amounts, dub it onto your thread. And when you wrap it, it wraps rather small around the hook. And then the rest you can set aside for another fly. We won't be needing it for the rest of the recipe. Um, I'm going to have to start a little bin for that. Little scraps of wool. Okay, so now you've got that done. And you want to put your tail on, but now if you put the tail on, which I've got a, I've already selected one off the head. Shoot. Well, I wanted to tie it in a little bit farther back, but. That's where I snipped it. Alright, so now, if you tie it in now, your the tail's probably going to pop up. And tie it in, and it's going to pop up a little bit. That's not terrible, I've seen a lot worse. But I really want the tail to sit down more. So there's two options. You can build up a thread, like a thread dam here. That's not really a thread dam, but uh, uh, more like a thread platform. But that's going to thicken out your um, hook shank in that area overall. Or you can put a like a Z bend in it. Put a little bend in it with your thumb, and when you tie it down and you pull it tight, that'll create the bottom bend. And I'll kind of keep it in place right where you want it on the hook shank. And I like that. I actually think that tail may be a little on the short side. Well, not too bad. If I would have tied it the way I wanted it, it would have been right on. But if we're comparing to the other fly, um, that's that's pretty close. So this one does not have a veiling on it. Uh, the other ones had a uh, Indian crow veiling. This one does not. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can go ahead and just put the butt right onto this one. Now the butt on this is red Berlin wool. So same thing, um, I have some left over from the one I tied yesterday, the Blue Doctor. So I've got that here and I'm just going to do the same. I'm just going to pull that apart. Wax on the thread. And 
and pretty much the same deal. Dub it on very thin. Oh. Alright, sorry about that. My neighbor's having some trouble backing a trailer into his driveway. His trailer kind of split in half. So if you hear any banging and clanging, that's them messing around out there. Um, okay, so where were we? Yes, we've got the butt on. Now, the ribbing is medium oval tinsel. So for that, I'm using um, Vivas. And we'll take that. And we'll pull that outer sheathing, sheathing off a little bit. And that's going to expose that silk core in there. Which will then... Um, we'll use that to tie in. That'll make it much smoother underneath the silk. Alright, so then tying that in, we'll tie in on the quartering away side. I kind of like the 530 position. 5 o'clock. And then the hackle it's black from the second turn so we'll just kind of gently mock up our turns here I think I'd like to bring it back just a little bit there we go I like to have all five turns and then have like the sixth one uh, on the underside is where you tie it off. So we'll move our thread up to about here. And the hackle I'm using is a um, black strung saddle hackle. Not really what I wanted to do here. Alright, so my other scissors Alright, so the black hackle I'm using, we'll just take it and spread out the fibers. And we can kind of see how long it is. Make sure it's gonna fit properly, and I think that's gonna work great. So then we'll just dig through here, find the tip. And then right here on top, we'll pull away all these little fibers, exposing the tip and tying that in directly on top of the fly. When we make our second wrap of tinsel, and the uh, tinsel crosses this point, it'll pick up, that's where this will start wrapping, is behind the tinsel. It'll tuck right in, and then it'll blend right in there. <coughs> Alright. 
Now we'll wrap forward. And I've got this silk. What I liked about this is that this silk is that it's on a spool. And it's on a perfect size bobbin spool that we can use it on the bobbin. Now if you remember some of my earlier videos, um, I've used this method before. But since we don't have to really split this silk, um, being it's two strand, it lays down pretty good on its own, um, I put it on the bobbin. So no gloves are needed. Um, and it's with a bobbin on this kind of a fly with blue doctors, you know, or flies that you have to go around to hackle, having it on the bobbin is much easier. So let's, um, let's see how the black looks. So we'll tie this in up here. Back up just a bit. And let that hang for a moment and we'll do a whip finish. Just getting this thread out of the way, it's much easier. Okay, now we can just take our time with this. And we can just wrap our thread. We can use our left hand to hold the hackle out of the way. And we'll just start wrapping. Every fourth or fifth turn, though, you do have to turn, stop, and spin your bobbin a little bit to untwist your, your silk. Now, as you can see, it doesn't cover very much. But, um... That doesn't really matter, I don't think. It lays down nicely. And in this method with the spool um, being right on the bobbin, you really saves you a lot of effort and time. Now we get to the hackle. I like to go over it just a little bit. And carefully bring that forward. Frayed spot in my silk, though. Well, other than that the silk is frayed in that one spot there. Come on. Apple's giving me fits.
trying not to get the hackle fibers caught up in the silk. I always get to this point, it's like, okay, one more wrap and I'm, and I'm home free. Because then I can hold it backwards and just wrap the rest of the way. I'll keep using the white thread. Um, I need to get some some 12O in black. <clears throat> and the head on this is wool anyway, red wool. Okay, so now we get this tied off. And before burnishing it, it looks pretty good. I'm going to take the burnisher to it. No, the burnisher's dirty. Something was on there. Smooths out very nicely. Yeah, I, I would definitely say that this is a a good solution, a good uh, affordable solution for silk for uh, for tires. I mean, even the experienced guys. I mean, if you guys are looking for something new, something different, something you want to play with. Uh, this stuff is nice. I like it. All right, so now we'll do our our silk. Or our, I'm sorry, our tinsel. Make sure that your second wrap crosses right over that, uh, where that hackle sticks out of the floss. And then just wrap the rest away. And then we tie off on the underside of six, the sixth wrap. Now you can go through and actually um, pull away the, the sheathing right here at your tie off, now that you know where it is. <coughs> you can back off from that. Oh, there it goes. One of the reasons that I don't often do that is I do like to be able to have 
this tag here um, right up until I and tie off my hackle. It just allows me to have, you know, I guess it's a little bit of security that I know I can change things a little bit if I need to and unwrap that tinsel and then rewrap it. I hate having to go through it and Almost looks like this hackle is broken. I unfortunately don't have a trick fix for that. Alright, so as we're wrapping it, we're tucking that stem right in behind that tinsel. And if you tuck it in right behind, there it goes. Okay, so we're redoing the hackle and the tinsel. Uh, and this is exactly why I like leaving that tag. Is if the hackle breaks, now we don't have to redo it all of it. So I will just redo that really quick and I'll be back with you. All right, I'm back. I've got uh, a new body on there. And just as before, the silk went on nice and smooth. And <clears throat> I, I, I really do enjoy this, uh, this mulberry silk, so. Oh no. Alright, so we were... Oh no. What is with this hackle? Alright, we're back again and hopefully third time's a charm. Now, as I'm, I'm thinking maybe there's an issue with the hackle. But I also tied this in differently. I tied this one in with the floss on the return instead of trying to fight around the hackle. So, let's see how this wraps. So now we make sure that that's tucked in right behind that tinsel. And then just pull back a little bit. And that gives you a nice wrapped hackle. And what you can do now <coughs> is right up about here is where it's going to come around the other side. So you can strip this off here and use that as your tie in point or tie off point, I should say. So that worked much better. So what I did was when I wrapped my floss this time, I wrapped the floss back to the butt, and then on my way back forward I used the floss just like I would thread. Uh, being on the spool, it made it much easier. And I just tied the uh, hackle in on that return trip, and that worked just fine. I'm sure there's going to be comments that's probably how I'm supposed to do it. But as I've said, I've been kind of self-taught up to this point, and only recently started reading books and actually getting into all of the real specifics of salmon flies. So... <clears throat> All right, next is the throat, which is J. And if you remember my video about J um, and how you split the J feathers. So 
So I've already gone ahead and split two J feathers for the throat. Alright, so we've got that tied in. Snip away this stuff here. And just wrap. And since you've got just the one side, it should be relatively easy to wrap. Just take it easy with it. And keep your it's easy, it's better to do with hackle pliers, but keep the J laying flat this direction as you wrap all the way around. If it starts to splay out, try to keep it flattened out like that. You'll find, uh, you'll find a much better throat when you're done. It's actually not bad for one feather. That's a relatively good looking throat right there. But I have two strips, so I may as well go ahead and lay in two. Lay down two. Why not, right? This is getting close to the head though. Probably only get another one or two wraps. Pull the rest of that away, exposing the stem, and tie that off. There we go. Nice J throat. 
Okay, so now for the now we're up to the wings. So I've got a couple of different sets of wings that I've been working on. All right, now this one I feel like is potentially the hardest one because you've got to make them into three piles. You stack them like this, remember? And then we're going to take these and sandwich them together with the golden pheasant on the inside. Now the galena is supposed to be in there, um, but being that it, it's supposed to be the, uh, the wood duck and the galena are actually supposed to be on the outside of the golden pheasant. And that is somewhat hard to do with the length being shorter than everything else. So I'm choosing to put that on second. All right, so I've got these sandwiched together now. You can see here with the golden pheasant right in there. So now we'll take this. And we're going to mount that right up here. And then we're setting that up just like we were setting the married wing, really. I'm going to do a loose wrap over it. And then we'll use our other hand to kink that and kind of make it there we go okay so we've got that on wing on the other side I still feel like it needs more um, so I am going to add another strip of golden pheasant on the outside of it, on the uh, top of it rather. Very small amount. Hmm. No, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to leave it. I want to see how it turns out like this. But we will mount the galena on there. The guinea hen. Just a loose wrap. When you're tying these sides on, by the way, I don't know if I've ever described it, you kind of want to have them almost um, getting tied onto the side right here. And that's the same wood duck we used before. It's the same wood duck I used for the demonstration of the other two wings. And I'm afraid that wood duck may have may no longer be usable. So Got another piece of wood duck. It's a different barring, but I think that'll add a little cool little effect to it. And then bronze mallard. Uh, we can use the same bronze mallard as last time, I think. Okay, 
So now we've got it all on there. And we'll just take our brush and run the brush through it. Now this method I think is one that takes a bit more getting used to. As you can see it almost looks like I mounted it upside down. The taper is reversed. Hmm. So now if I would have mounted the wing the way I normally would with a, a married wing this would have worked out better. Mention in the comments. Let me know if you know how to do this method and yet get the proper taper from the golden pheasant because the golden pheasant um, when mounted upside down chips down um, just like the um, goose is here this is the effect that I'm getting uh, is there a way to reverse that and change it. <clears throat> Let me know in the comments or uh, message me. Actually, no, leave it in the comments so other people can read it and uh, kind of understand what you're talking about and um, how to do that. I'm going to keep working on it, um, but I actually think that I do not like this wing for this fly. And I think this wing needs to come off. Uh, I'm going to complete this fly. I'm going to use one of the other wings. So let's just take this one right off. We'll keep the video rolling. I'll reuse a couple of parts and we'll get this fly finished up. I think the method is solid. I've seen it done and I will keep practicing at it, but um, Yeah, I definitely don't know uh, how that's done properly yet, but I will figure it out. Alright, I'm just looking for the previous underwing that we had tied on. There it is. It is now a complete mess. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty ugly. Um, I hate to waste it, though. There's no straightening it out, though. Once that's gone, it's gone. Grab a new underwing. All right, so what I did for this other for this underwing is you pull a little off each side, and you keep it all together. When you pull it off, you make sure you keep that at an angle so that way you've got this skin from the rackets on there. And you do that with both sides. Doesn't matter how much of each, just a pinch of each. Kind of going to get mixed in anyway. So now you can try to manipulate it a little bit, get it out kind of towards the, where the butt is. 
and then with a loose wrap just tie that in and then this is the second wing that I built this one was just from a pile of um, randomness um, hmm. This is wing number one, actually. Okay. This was wing number one. I really like this one. So this one has, if you haven't seen the other video yet, this one has uh, golden pheasant tail secondary in it. It's not the actual centers. Um, I wanted to see how they would look in a mixed wing and if they were going to be any good to, to me. And I think they could be useful. They're a little bit lighter. They're not as stiff or filling, I guess, as the other um, golden pheasant uh, center tail pieces, but I, I, I do like it. Okay, so I also want to add a little bit of a little bit extra golden pheasant to it center tail just a little on each side Remember, we're cutting these off and then mount them upside down. And then that one. I think that gives a nice, nice look to it. Putting a little bit extra over the top. And now this is the wood duck that was used. <laughs> this uh, this wood duck's been on three, four wings now. It's uh, probably had enough. I don't know more wings it can take. That. And then the bronze mallard. Now the bronze mallard is looks like it's seen better days. Let's get a thicker, fresher piece. The opposite side is still looking pretty good. Okay. And then we can just take the brush. Run the brush through it. And if you look right here, you can see those new sprigs that I put in have fallen short. So, take off the wood duck, take off the mallard. And we'll just move them just a shade. Maybe.
I think that's better. Let's get the other stuff back on. Now let's brush it. That's better. Some of the shorter fibers still want up on top though. There we go. That looks better. I like that. I think uh, we're going to leave it like that. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of head cement to it. Yep, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to add a little Sally Hansen's to it, and then uh, we'll come back to this when uh, when that's all dried up. And we'll put a head on it. With a mixed wing, if you don't put some sort of a, uh, an adhesive, um, Sally Hansen's or Salire Clear or anything like that, something that's going to soak in and hold this all together, uh, these wing fibers can pull, pull apart from the middle. And obviously we don't want that, so... I'm uh, using a little bit at this point is um, kind of necessary. So, alright, we're going to let that dry, and uh, as soon as that dries, I'll be back with you to finish up the head. Alright, that's a little bit of time to firm up. And I'm going to go ahead and clip some of this away. The only thing left to do is put on the horns. These patterns don't call for a topping. Now, I, I noticed that these, some of these calling for horns are actually only calling for um, blue swan, or in this case it would be blue goose, or blue turkey, but uh, it's calling for, for that and not blue and gold macaw. However, the uh, uh, the next district after this one in the court collection actually does call for blue and gold macaw. Otherwise, the the pattern is exactly the same. So um, I think I'm probably going to wind up going with calling it the Black Doctor from that particular district. And that district is the Bantry and Kenmore districts. Um, so if you look that up, the fly will be on 
page 251. You can find the actual recipe on page 250. And that's on the core collection. I'll have that link in the description below. Kind of messed up a little bit, I think, and didn't leave myself enough. Enough of an angle for my head. Oh, shoot. Boy, this fly is really just out for me. This fly is out to test me. Okay. So I think that wing is a bit long. Now that I look at it and the head is clipped off of it, it's a little on the long side, but I don't think it's terrible. We'll brush that again in a minute. All right, so we've got the wing on, I've got the head all cleaned up, now we just gotta attach the horns. Which I'm gonna make these just a hair longer than the wing. Uh, let's see if the opposite side will reach. Just. It just reaches. Perfect, I like that. You know, tying those in, you just lay them down in the direction that you want them, and you can literally lay them right up against the wing and just one wrap, and as you can see, they're on. If you separate them from the, from the body, you'll notice it'll actually bow out from the body. That's okay. Just move your fingers and pinch it back, and it'll stick right to the body. All right, so now we'll go ahead and just add the head. Clean this up just a little bit up here. Alright, so this is uh, just like the butt, it's just the red Berlin wool. I'm going to take it and just pull it apart. I'll just take this and we'll just dub this on gently a little at a time and you dub it on nice and tight we'll wrap some up close up front right here first this is going to end up being a little bit on the big side I think no matter what I do.
and just a tiny bit more. Okay, that should suffice. And just that smidge more for the back side. Finish off with a little varnish. Or Sally Hansen's, whatever you prefer. And a whip finish. Just a single one, tuck in right behind that wool head. Is all you need. Okay, I'll take the brush. Uh, I don't know if you can see that thread though. I'm going to take the brush up to the wing. There we go. And here we have the completed Black Doctor from the Bantry and Kenmore district of the uh, Cork Collection. Um, again, it's not 100% a cork fly. Um, the hook I know is not right. And uh, the method I used is probably not what most use. Um, this was just a way to show you guys that there's, you know, other ways of getting a, a decent looking wing. I mean, I think they look great. Um, but you guys can be the judges, you guys can let me know, and um, I'm sure you will let me know. So I'll be doing some more of these flies um, in the future. As far as the silk goes, um, yeah, I think it's a really good uh, source. I think it's cheap enough, and I think it offers a variety of colors. So I will leave this, the uh, link to the store where I found it uh, in the description below. And, um, you know, any of you guys that you know, are looking for some other silk options, um, this is a good one. So, that being said, I uh, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. Got any questions, let me know in the comments. Do the same. And, um, you know, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Our giveaway is... Uh, about a week and a half away now so uh don't forget to subscribe find that video get yourself signed in for the giveaway and uh don't forget i'm also doing two uh two uh prizes this time so be sure you're entered i uh, hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful night and i will see you in the next video take care